Uh, I'm quite surprised to see so many people in this room because uh, I thought the topic is fairly uh, niche. But uh, thanks for coming. I hope I will not disappoint you too much. Uh, my name is uh, Arto True. Nobody can uh, pronounce it correctly the first time, so it's okay if you don't. Uh, I work at GuardTime, uh, which is uh, uh, a cryptographic uh, software development company. And I actually do build uh, binary trees pretty much all day long. Uh, except not exactly of this kind, because of reasons uh, that will be apparent uh, approximately on slide six. Uh, so uh, the problem that the Fenwick trees uh, are designed to solve is that uh, given uh, if, you, if you have an array of data and you need to compute sums of arbitrary segments in this uh, array, and you need to update the elements of this array, and you need to do both in uh, infrequent and uh, frequent basis and on an predictable schedule. And you, of course, you as as developer, you want your code to be efficient. So uh, obvious solution: just keep the array. When you need to update an element, you just write into that element. When you need uh, a sum of a of a subsequence of that uh, uh, array, you just uh, scan over that subsequence and add up the elements. Which means that the summing takes time linear to the size of the slice that you need to sum. Uh, another way is uh, to keep prefix sums, which means that in each element of your array, instead of the initial uh, original element, you keep the sum of the elements of the array up to that point. And then, of course, if you, uh, if you, need, a, if you need a sum of a subsequence, you can do it with, a, with one simple subtraction. You first take read out from the array the sum from the beginning of the array to the end of your segment and then you read out the sum from the beginning of the array until just before the beginning of your segment, and the difference is the sum of your segments. So you can do uh, read out the sums very quickly, but the problem now is that if you need to update an element, let's say you, you need to put a new value here, then this affects all the sums that come later in the array. So the update becomes uh, slow uh, and proportional to the uh, size of the array. So, uh, what you can do to speed up a standard solution, build an index. If your data structure is slow, you need to add more structure, you need an index. You can build a binary tree on top of your array so that in the leaves of the tree are your original array elements, and then each of the non-leaf elements is the sum of the child elements. So uh, this way, uh, updates can be done in a logarithmic time, so it's, it takes, uh, it, it takes a, a good middle ground between uh, constant time and linear time. Uh, because you only need to, uh, when, you, when you update element here, you only need to update the sums where it participates, which is uh, the nodes on the path from this leaf to the root. And when you uh, need to do a sum, you only need to, uh, if you uh, need to do a prefix sum, you only need to collect uh, a few root elements of, of a well-chosen well set of subtrays here. And this you can also do in logarithmic time. So you can do both updates and sums in logarithmic time. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of still quite trivial part. Now, uh, the interesting part comes uh, the, if, if, you, if you do not wish to allocate extra memory. Then uh, you can observe that in each of those triples where you have two ch child nodes and the parent node, then uh, if the parent is a sum of children, we can throw away one of the child nodes. And we can recompute it on fly when we need it. So we can go throw away each child, uh, one child from each, each, uh, each pair of childs, and we can do it again and again until we are left with uh, few enough elements that they actually fit in the same array. So you, you can, uh, you can uh, prune your tree, and then you can, whatever is left of it fits in the same array. You don't need any extra memory. And this is the magic bit. <coughs> and it's not actually complicated to do it. Uh, I, I don't expect you to actually read the code. It will be available, uh, of course, online. Uh, later, but, uh, but uh, the point of this code is to show that it is uh, really quite simple and sm small piece of code, and despite appearances of those two uh, nested uh, for loops, it's not, uh, even, even building the index is not uh, of uh, square complex complexity, and it's, uh, y you might think uh, with, with it going from uh, the mask value going from one and doubling, doubling, doubling at every, every uh, way, uh, every uh, cycle through the loop uh, until uh, it, it reaches uh, uh, sufficiently large value. You would, might think it's an n log n process, but actually 
uh, the loop body is uh, never executed for half of your array elements. And it's executed uh, uh, mo uh, at most once for half of your elements, at most twice for uh, half of the remaining elements, and so on. So uh, totally, it is actually a linear time operation to convert your plain array into an array uh, uh, embedding the Fenwick tree representation of the same sequence. So it's really efficient. You, you don't really, since you normally convert your array into this tree only once in the, in the beginning of your program, you, you don't really care so much about this uh, efficiency of this, but uh, we will need uh, this, uh, this uh, equation on the next slide. This is why I spent time here on it. And uh, uh, you, you don't even have to do this if your array starts out filled with all zeros because the uh, Fenwick tree representation of a 0, 0, 0 array is still a 0, 0, 0 array. So it, it becomes a no-op if you start with zeros and then start adding values to your array one by one. So uh, now, uh, of course, the problem is that we have thrown away half of our original uh, data elements. So even reading back uh, one element from the array is a non-trivial uh, thing now. Uh, but uh, it, it is easy to recover, of course, reversing the process of throwing away elements. It is easy to recover the, the data that you need. And uh, so uh, this uh, Fenwick get is uh, a slightly, uh, ever so slightly more complicated. It has one more line because it needs to return the value. Unlike the initialization fun function, which was void, so it didn't need the return. But uh, pretty much it, it does the same thing in reverse, uh, which means that the time complexity of it also is uh, the same thing in reverse. If you do m... Uh, uniformly distributed uh, queries across these arrays, and the average cost is two operations per query. So it doesn't give you reading back individual elements, uh, does not have any, any exponential or anything like that slowdown. So that's, that's also pretty neat. Uh, I ran tests on my uh, laptop. Uh, as long as the array was small enough that it fit into cache, then the, there is this other bits of um, mangling the indexes and stuff. So it was, in practice, about five times slower than reading just from a plain array. So uh, 5x slowdown for this kind of indexing mechanism, I think it's not too bad. And in fact, when the array grew too big not to fit into level two cache anymore, then the time overhead compared to plain array was actually close to two times, because then reading from the memory was an expensive operation and all this bit feeding here, which happens in registries, uh, in registers is pretty much negligible. It, it does put a, a little bit more pressure on your uh, registry us uh, register usage, of course, uh, if, you, if you do this inside a larger program. So I, I think uh, assuming a four times uh, slowdown compared to plain array is reasonable. So if you do need to do an update, then of course uh, in, in a full size array, as I, as I showed before, you, you need to go through uh, this uh, path from the leaf to the root. And it's uh, actually, Pretty much the same, except some of the elements that you would update are not in the, in the array, so you don't update them, but you still need to, go, need to do the loop through all the layers in the, in the tree, uh, and then check if the, array, if the element actually is present in the array, you update it, if not, you skip it, and so it is a log n operation still, and the code is not too bad. <coughs> now, uh, uh, actually, what, what, what this... Uh, code here does, as the name of the function implies, it increments the value of the array. And, and the simplest way to assign a new value into an element of your original array is uh, to uh, read, using the function from two slides back, uh, the original value, then compute the difference of what you want the new value to be to the original value, and then do update of the value, because applying deltas to this tree is uh, easier and cheaper than just pushing a new element into this tree. So uh, uh, computing sums uh, in the initial, initial uh, full-sized binary tree uh, slide, it was uh, by just, uh, in, instead of adding those elements individually, you just read out the root value of the tree and use it uh, to represent the whole block. And you do it with, with, uh, with a sufficiently well-selected se se section of blocks. And then if you want to add elements from uh, 0 to 6, you, you only need to add together those three elements, and you get the correct value, obviously. And now, uh, in a reduced tree, it is pretty much the same. You still have to find out uh, which of the elements of the tree are that you need to add. You need to get those elements and add them together. And this looks uh, roughly like this. So it's a little bit more complicated here 
uh, you, you even have an if statement inside the loop, which, for, which is already uh, one level of complexity above all the previous functions that you have seen so far. And, uh, but but it's it really, if you, if, you, if you visualize in your head what, what is going on in a full tree, and the only question here is this uh, bit mass comparison is to determine if the, if the elements that you uh, want to add to uh, is, is in the tree or not. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, walking through the path uh, from, from, uh, from, uh, from this uh, element, which is the first one not in the uh, tree, and then uh, checking out if the sibling is on the left-hand side, uh, then this means that you need to add this element to your sum, and if the sibling uh, is on the right-hand side, this means that you need not to add it. So this is what the masking here does. So basically everything that is to the left of you in the tree, you add into your sum, and everything that's to the right is uh, past you as, as far as array element ordering goes, and you don't, uh, you don't add it. So, and so this is still O log n, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not my invention. As the name, name implies, uh, Fenwick tree, uh, it was unsurprisingly invited by Peter Fenwick in 1993, which kind of relates to the last lightning talk from uh, yesterday, that there are still interesting things happening in data structures even uh, as we speak. Uh, this one is not really as we speak, but compared to the 60s and 70s where most of stuff seems to be invented, this is still quite recent. Uh, I, was, I, 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 I did not read the original paper when it came, came out in uh, 1994, but I was already in college at that time, so I, I consider it to be kind of like my age, the, the, the invention. Uh, if you do go uh, and find uh, Peter's original paper and start reading it, then uh, my code uses uh, the code that is out on uh, GitHub. Uh, uses a slightly different indexing of elements because I think my way of indexing works out better if the array is, uh, the size of the array is not an even power of two. Uh, Fenwick invented his trees uh, to support uh, uh, arithmetic coding, to support uh, keeping character counts in, uh, in arithmetic or, uh, or symbol counts in arithmetic coding, and his alphabet size was always an, always an even power of two, so for his purposes he didn't need to worry about uh, people maybe wanting to use an array that is 500 elements long and not 512. And so that's it. Thank you.